welcome back in this lecture we will look at the goy chapman model for electrochemical double layer capacitors so in the previous lecture we had looked at the simplest model helmuth's model for capacitance of a edlc in this we had talked about uh, the dielectric constant dielectric permittivity of this uh, layer and xh which is shown here all right so here the main thing to understand is that in this model capacitance is independent of voltage in time it became possible to do experiments wherein these capacitance were measured these are beautiful set of experiments um done in 50s and 60s um that led to a nobel prize later on dropping mercury electrode to heroski we won't go into the details of such experiments but we will just project the results from one such experiments what is plotted here It, on the y axis is the differential capacitance farad uh, divided by meter squared and this is the potential with respect to pzc this refers to point of zero charge that is at zero the electrode has no charge and as you go to negative potential it becomes negatively charged and as you go towards positive potential the electrode becomes positively charged what is that we observe first there is an important feature that is not captured by helmuth's model that is the capacitance is critically dependent upon voltages that is uh, the first observation as the voltage changes the capacitance also changes then in addition as the concentration of the electrolyte changes uh, that is let's say some salt in the electrolyte changes the salt that was neutralized in this experiment the capacitance increases so this also makes sense in the sense that if you go to greater concentration there are more elect ions available uh, to interact with the electrode surface you would anticipate that the capacitance is going to be increased but this feature is also not captured by the simplest helmuth's model and there are other features that are worth observing one is as you go to high voltages let's say in the negative side the capacitance becomes more or less a constant and as you go to higher concentration the symmetry between the positive potential and the negative potential is lost all these things are not captured by the simplest model so we need to look at more complex models so uh the way to understand the more complex model is to look at the debye huckel theory so in an earlier lecture um the lecture by this title we had elaborately discussed the debye huckel model actually the goy chapman model came before the debye huckel model but in terms of logical presentation the debye huckel uh, theory is more easy to understand because because it has because the debye huckel uh, model is developed under spherical symmetry this makes mathematics uh, less complex and this is a good lecture to good model to understand why are this lecture because um, many aspects of model building in terms of mean field theory is elucidated by the development of debye huckel model it's a very nice model is good to take time to understand this model and this also gives you a very good understanding on how to think about activity coefficient um in solutions so in the debye huckel model what we saw is that let's say 
when you have a positive charge, um, the entire solution might be neutral, but because of the presence of positive charge, the rest of the solution will contribute to a negative charge. So all these details are presented in this model. Please take a look at that. So let's say you have a positive charge of charge Q. This gradation in the blue color refers to the negative charge. Okay, So if this is positive, there is more negative charge adjacent to the positive charge. As you go far away from this positive charge, the extent of negative charge decreases and at sufficiently far away distances, the entire system becomes charge neutral. So there won't be any excess negative charge. So all these things are elaborated here. So an important quantity we developed via the debye huckel model is called the Debye length. So the Debye length um, has many features. So the important feature is the Debye length increases with temperature. So, um, so because temperature occurs here, it is clear this is a thermodynamic theory. It's not just a mechanical theory. So, and another point to notice is lambda, the, that is the Debye length, decreases when the concentration of the ions in the electrolyte increases. So take time to understand this lecture because this, it gives you a strong foundation for thinking through um, the thermodynamics of these kinds of systems. Moving on, we are not going to be deriving the Goy Chapman model here but we are just going to present the result of the Goy Chapman model. So the capacitance obtained from the Goy Chapman model is provided by this formula. This is the relative permittivity. This is epsilon naught. We have already defined these quantities in earlier lectures. This is the lambda by length times this quantity. Uh, this is the potential in the solution. So let us first contrast this formula by the simplest formula that you had seen for an electrostatic capacitor. The electrostatic capacitor capacitance was represented by this formula. In contrast to this formula, what you have here is this D is replaced by the Debye length and there is this oscillating feature. Okay. So this feature is not available in this formula. So what you see is that um, the capacitance as a function of potential in the solution varies. Okay, So this is an important feature that we observed in experiments. So that feature, that is the variation of capacitance with respect to potential that is absent in this formula, this C as a function of V is captured by the Goy Chapman model. And in addition, the increase in capacitance with concentration of the salts or the electrolytes is also captured. And you also notice that the positive and negative potential are symmetric. This region is symmetric with respect to this region. Let us look at the results of the Goy Chapman model with experimental, against experimental results. So at low concentration, this capacitance behavior with the positive and negative potential, that is symmetric, that is captured here. The increase in capacitance um, with respect to concentration, that is also captured here. What is not captured are two important features. One is that as the potential increases into the negative region, the, the experiment suggests that the capacitance is becomes a constant and the asymmetry is also not captured. So the Goy-Chapman model works 
well at low concentration near the point of zero charge because at low concentration um the capacitance dependence on potential negative and positive potential is symmetric here also that symmetry is maintained the capacitance variation with potential is also captured but it is important to notice that the capacitance predicted by the Guy Chapman model is much more than the potential, the capacitance um, as measured via experiments. So that is a failure of the Guy Chapman model. This model can be improved by a more elaborate model called the Stern model that came after the Guy Chapman model. We will look at that in the next lecture. Thank you.